Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. My name is Crown and today I'm going to read you some very interesting stories that I hope that you're gonna love. And now, without further ado, let's go! There was this little restaurant I went to. It's a nice little bump with really cheap food and really friendly staff. They also have a shuffleboard table. And that's where the story begins. I was on my lunch break from my actual job. I'm a manager, so I usually have to wear nice polos or button-up dress shirt. Anyway, I'm eating my lunch while playing shuffleboard with myself. The bar is being overrun by a bunch of people, and the poor bartender was all on her own. There weren't any employees helping with the tables out in the dining room. I personally know the bartender, so I came up and asked if she needed any orders taken to any tables. She smiled at me and pointed to the plates that were on the serving tray. Those go to the table in the corner, she said, as she continued making drinks. I nodded and took the tray and made my way over to the table and served them. This one lady we will call Karen, she had the I wanna talk to your manager style haircut. She looks at me and scoffs. I have never seen it take this long for me to get a freaking sandwich. Sorry for that, hon, but she's been really busy at the bar. I say, pointing to my friend. I know, and yet you just sit at the shuffleboard table and eat your burger while you let her down. What kind of manager are you? I raised the brow before remembering how nicely I'm dressed. Seeing she believed I was a manager there, I replied pretty normally. Oh, I don't work here. She cuts me off. Don't try to pull crap your way out of this. I've heard enough. I am calling the owner of this place right now and letting him know how much of a useless idiot you are. At this point, I'm trying to explain how I was just trying to help, but she had her phone out and called the guy who owned the bub. Every time I tried to explain this to her, she just flipped me off. I rolled my eyes and just walked back to the bar, telling my friend about the woman. Friend tells me, oh yeah, she's some entitled witch that comes in here every other day. She keeps complaining and trying to get everyone in trouble. She found out my boss's name and searched his number in a phone book or something, so if any of us try to tell her something she doesn't like, she calls a boss. He usually just tells us to let her eat for free and get her to leave. Like I said, I'm a manager, so when I heard that I could tell that wasn't a good idea. If you give problem customers free things, they are just going to come back causing more problems expecting it to get them more free things. I go back to playing on a shuffleboard and eating my burger, and I see Karen storming up to me. I told him you were sitting here playing shuffleboard instead of helping your employee. He's on his way up here to fire you. Oh, that's going to be really hard for him to do. Since I don't work here, you stupid witch. Karen gets really red in the face, and she reached over and slapped me. And now she screams. How dare you say that to me? I will screw up your whole life, you waste of filth. Now, I'm a simple man, and I was raised to never hit a woman. But I'm a second degree black belt in Taekwondo, and a first degree black belt in Hapkido. I don't need to hit her to make my point. But she goes to slap me again, and I catch her wrist, pulling it behind her back, and kicking out both her feet to bring her to her knees. She couldn't move in this position without pain soothing up her arms and neck. Believe me, I've been locked in this position before. At this point, the whole bump turned to see the commotion and my friend came over to me. Are you okay? Let me go! I'm going to get you arrested! And I will sue you so hard, you will be lucky to be living in a cardboard box! I asked my friend if she could get some zip ties. Once she gets me some, I fashion out some male shift handcuffs and restrain her. At this point, the owner walks in and sees this. What happened? Your stupid manager assaulted me. That's what happened. I'm suing him and you and your business for this. Um, he doesn't work for me. He's a regular here, ma'am. Karen got pride right in the face, but she sat there and stayed quiet now. I think she realized what kind of trouble she was in. After a few moments, the police arrived and I explained the events that unfolded to pose the owner and the police. My friend backed me up on all of it, despite Karen trying to deny it. The police officer asked if I wanted to press charges for assault 
And I said gladly. She was sent away in a police car after that. So I got a call from Windows Technical Company today. So I decided to have a little fun and said, I am so thankful you called. You can tell I have been having problems. You gotta hook him hard these scammer fish. So first he asks me to go to the computer and I say, Okay, Pac Majinder. Fake name he gave me. Let's do this. I tell him it does take 10 minutes for my computer to start because of all the problems. So I look at my computer and type Windows Technical Scam in search bar to see what he will ask next. All while talking about my grandson's soccer game. I have no grandkids. I just set the hook. Now he proceeds to tell me, open up Microsoft Edge. Lo and behold, lo and behold, that's the one I use and I tell this to my friend. I open it up and he proceeds to tell me to go to his scam site. But first, I tell him my Facebook has messages and I need to check them first to see if they are important. Couple pictures of my grandson, asking if he has kids. No, he didn't if interested. Now about 18 minutes in, I actually go to his site. Now, what do I do now, sir? Time to reel this camera fish in. My body pack now tells me to download a file. I tell him I do, I don't. He says run it. But surprisingly, right before I do, I tell him my computer pop-up says it needs to install an update. I ask him if I should, then he says no. I ask him how do I get rid of it then. He says press cancel. I tell him I don't see a cancel option and how my son, I have no kids, says I should always install these updates. He compromises and I install updates. Lo and behold, it's an update that needs a restart. Time to tell him about my wife. No wife either. I got 15 minutes to kill. I got the net ready. This is a big one. Ready to reel in again. I need all of his instructions. Again, back to the scam site. I have to re-download the program again. He asks me to run it and I say I do. And I immediately thank him for his help and proceed to tell him it seems like my computer is already faster. He is confused as this was supposed to lock me out of my computer unless I pay him $400. Time to punk the fish in the head. My confused scammer fish says, I must have done something wrong and we have to done it all again. He still has some game in him. I proceed to say, why when my computer is running better? A very frustrated fish because he has been on the line for almost an hour and I have started calling him Mr. Pat Majong. Now to put him out of his misery as this angry fish is flopping all over the place, I tell him I downloaded it again, but a new message has popped up. Is that a problem? He asks what it says. I tell him, you've been trolled, followed by as many swear words as I could fit in. He then proceeded to yell at me. I disliked his tone and cut the line. Well, that's my good deed done for the day. And as a friendly reminder, Microsoft does not call you. It is always a scam and never runs a program if somebody cold calls you like my dear friend Peg did. I was driving home from work and traffic was packed up pretty badly for a few miles. It was stop and go. When I get stuck in that, I'll usually back about 75 feet of the car in front of me so that I can hold a pace and move at a slow but constant roll, like the semi-trucks do. This way, I am not participating in the bumper-to-bumper -bumper move and break like the rest of the smooth brain drivers. Some dude in an Acura crossover was behind me, and I guess he was getting upset because I wasn't two feet from the car in front of me, driving like a smooth brain. So he gets up on me and starts beeping his horn at me. LOL, I thought to myself as I turned up my radio. But then he starts flashing his brights at me, which is where I got annoyed. He's one of those people that has the super bright LED headlights. My car is much lower than his, so his low beams are already pretty bright in my mirrors. Bright enough that I don't want to look at them. The first time he flashed his high beams, it put spots in my vision for a moment. It genuinely hurt my eyes. After the first flash, he waits for about 10 seconds 
beeps his horn and then flashes me again. Now I'm getting mad. I'm thinking, where do you want me to go, huh? Do you really think being two feet from the car in front of you will make traffic move faster? Then he flashes me a third time. But this time, he held him on for about 15 seconds. Time for the gloves to come off. During those 15 seconds, as I'm looking away from my mirrors, I see my 14,000 lumen searchlight sitting in my passenger seat. At which point, I'm immediately overcome by a wave of chaotic lawful excitement. What he has just set in motion cannot be stopped. I think to myself, oh buddy, you just opened the wrong can of worms. You're gonna learn today. I grab the flashlight and set it to its absolute max. 14,000 lumen brightness setting. The flashlight has a sensor in it to automatically dim the light if facing down on a table. Because otherwise the diodes would get so hot, they would melt the lens. The 14,000 lumen setting is so intense. The 57 watt hour battery can only hold it for 180 seconds before the flashlight automatically notches down to a measly 9,500 lumens. During those 180 seconds, the light will burn through 15% of its battery power. For reference on just how prior this is, the literal sun emits a luminosity of 11,000 lumens per square foot on a bright and clear day. I turn around and aim it straight at the back of my rear window. My car is pretty noisy, so before I turn it on, I rev up my engine to make sure Captain Smooth's brain is eyes forward when I violate his retinas with full force of an afternoon sun. I hit the power button and can only imagine the freight train of shock and pain that plowed over this man. It was so bright, his automatic headlights shut off because the car thought it was daytime. With the lights on, I could see him clear as glass through his tinted windshield. He was covering his eyes and looking down, probably screaming. I watched him try and flip down his sun visor, but his hand couldn't find it. As I thought to myself, burn you jerk, burn. I imagine my facial expression was similar to that of a six-year-old roasting insects with a magnifying glass on a bright summer day. After about five seconds of blinding lights, I took mercy and shut it off. He proceeds to back off and move over to a different lane. Was this an unsafe thing for me to do? Absolutely. Was this illegal? Almost certainly. Was it warranted? Without question. Possibly the highlight of my year. Drive safe and don't be a jerk to the car in front of you, because they might just have the tools to teach you a lesson. I'm a bit of a gun nut. So naturally, I visit the range often. I took a trip with a friend to an outdoor range and after a while of shooting, this other group showed up. I was coming back from setting up more targets when I noticed a kid with him who is not wearing ear protection. One of the adults with him notices my concern and attempts to reassure me saying that he won't be shooting today. I ask if they have hearing protection and he says, we'll be fine, keep shooting. I then empty a 20 round magazine of 7.62 by 51. I look over after a couple of shots and notice they are all covering their ears with their hands. Depending on the rifle, 7.62 by 51 can generate around 150 decibels. Permanent ear damage can occur at 120 decibels for any length of time. They left as soon as my magazine was empty. I'm from the Netherlands and this happened 8 years ago, but remember it as clear as water. All was going well for my dad at the time. He was manager of one tanking station for PP. Yes, the multi-pillion company BP. After a while, my father noticed cigarettes were missing every week, so he investigated it and found a thief, even on tape. Father got him fired and BP promoted him. Father now manages and runs three tanking stations in Limburg. All went well for a while until father, out of nowhere, was asked to come to BP's headquarter all the way up the country and it was like three hour drive. After father arrived, he was asked to be followed into a room with two people. The leader of BP Netherlands 
and his lawyer. After a long talk about the performances and all the other nonsense, my father knew he was getting fired and he just asked, am I getting fired? Yes, you are. What reasoning? Theft and using the company credit card to buy stuff. So you are fired. OP and send a vote at that, which means without compensation and the bad record so they want to ruin my dad's future too. All right, I will see you in court then. My dad tells him. He heads out and goes home to tell the news to us. We all were in disbelief, but he said not to worry because he saved all bills of expenses made at the company for 15 years long. BB didn't know that. Father then called a lawyer to meet up and discuss the case. My father's lawyer laughed as he saw all the tickets and bills of all the expenses made for 15 years. We will win with ease. After preparing and filing the case, we got to court. Boss and boss's lawyer had a smug face when they entered the courtroom. Father's lawyer stated in the case that he was fired for no reason whatsoever and that boss tried to ruin his career by this. Boss lawyer says, To my understanding, you brought food for your employees without permission. That says, I was a manager and I don't need permission to obey the law since it's required for the company to arrange dinner for people who stayed over 8 hours in one shift. Shows the receipt and time span of the co-worker's shift. Alright, that doesn't explain why you bought clothing with the company's money. As required by the law, I need to provide my employees with clothing of the company. And he shows the receipt. This went on a couple of times until boss lawyer had nothing to show anymore and was panicky scrolling through the papers. They lost their smug faces here and then. The judge had seen enough. He says, Okay, enough. Boss, there is nothing OP's father did wrong. He obeyed the law and cared a lot for his employees. I hereby order BP to pay for legal costs, court fees, emotional damage to the family, all utility bills for the past six months, lawyer costs for post parties. If father wants to work with BP again, you are required to hire him and the fine which has to be paid in full to the father. Can't say how much but the number in total had at least six digits. After this happened, father had no interest in working with them ever again. Not one year later, my father bought up a building and started his own shop seven years later and the shop is still standing. So remember, if you keep by the law, companies can do anything no matter how expensive their lawyers are. And now we have reached the end of today's stories. Thank you for watching and see you next time.